A few videos back, we talked about data pages. In that video, we said that data pages play a role between our cases and our data records. Well, actually, a report definition is the actual rule responsible for retrieving information and sending it from the database to the data page. With this rule, we are able to filter, order, and specify which attributes we want to retrieve from the database table. Just as a note, a data page has multiple ways in which it can be populated through report definitions, data transforms, lookups, and activities. And in fact, a single data page can have multiple sources. In this video, we are going to focus on report definition. I have seen many videos that compare report definition to SQL. SQL stands for Structure Query Language and it's a language used to interact with databases. You can do many things with SQL. You can write, read, update records, and delete records from a database. However, the report definition rule only has the read capabilities of SQL. So we can filter, we can order, we can do joins, and do other advanced techniques to retrieve information from a database. What I plan for this video is to create a specialized report definition that will be able to find a record with a given username and password. But first, we need to configure the account data page that we created so that we can store records in it. All right, in the last video, we created this account data type. But this account data type is not able to store any records so far. We can change that if we make some configurations in our data type. So let's open the account data type. Let's go to the records tab. And I'm going to click on configure source. Here we need to select a primary key that we are going to use for storing records. Our primary key is going to be username. So as you can see, we have username, password, first name, and last name. If you want, you can add a record right here. So I'm going to add one. And I'm going to click Submit. Before clicking Submit, you can see here that this action of clicking Submit is going to create for us three data pages account, account list, and account savable. So, yeah, that's exactly what we want to do. So let's click Submit. Okay, it's all done. Let's click Close. And once this is refreshed, you will see that we will be able to store records in this account data type. So this is the one that we created. I'm going to add another record so that we have two records and we can do some testing. Okay, so here we have our two records. I'm going to go to our App Explorer and I'm going to open this account class. And we will find that in data model, we will have our three data pages. And under reports, in report definitions, we will have this report called data table editor report. And this report definition is being used by our account list data page. So here we can see that in data sources, we have one data source, which is that report definition. On many rules in Pega, we can run the rules in order to see what they do. So if we go to Actions and click Run, this will open this new window where we are able to click again on Run and it will run the rule for us. As you can see here, we get a, a lot of information. Uh, what is important here is this property, which is called PX Result Count. And this is telling us how many results were retrieved by running this data page. So we have two, and we can see these two results 
down below, if we do PX results, we expand this, we will see the list of results. The reason that we have these two records is because of this report definition. If we open the report definition, we are also able to run it. So before running the report definition, let's check what is in a report definition rule in Pega. In our report definition, in the query tab, we have this edit column section. In this section, we can see a list of properties. These are the properties that are being retrieved from the account table in our database. As you can see, some of these properties are the ones that we created. Username, first name, last name, and password. And the remaining properties were created by Pega. So for example, PY label is a property auto-generated by Pega. If I remove this property from this list, it will no longer be retrieved when using this report definition. Just as a note, the list of records that is shown in this data type viewer is based on the default report definition created by Pega. Okay, so down below we have this section to edit filters. So I'm going to make a copy of this report definition so that we can start testing it. I don't recommend you edit the out-of-the-box rules that Pega creates for your rules unless you know what you are doing. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to make a copy. So over here on the save drop down, I'm going to click save as. I want to start working on retrieving the accounts by username and password in this report definition. So I'm going to name it retrieve account by username and password. Okay, so I don't need all of these properties, so I'm going to remove them from this report definition. I only care about the username, first name, last name, and password. Okay, so here in edit filters, we only care right now about this first section. So we can filter the results that we get from the database with this report definition by setting some conditions. So for example, one condition can be that I only want to retrieve the accounts of users whose first name is Michael. So here I can select the property that is going to be first name. The relationship, I can select one of all of this. So it can be is equal, is less than if we are talking about numbers. Uh, it starts with or ends with, or also the ones that negates these kinds of condition, like is not equal, doesn't start with, or doesn't contain something, or is not null. So I'm going to say first name is equal to Michael. So let's see what this does. So I'm going to save it and run it. So as you can see, we are only getting one record from the account table. And the record is only this one because this is the only one that has first name Michael. That's fine, right? Uh, but how do we make this actually a bit more dynamic? Well, in many rules in Pega, we also have these things called parameters. And if we go to the parameters tab, we can create some parameters that this rule can take in in order to be a bit more dynamic. So for example, I'm going to create one new parameter. I'm going to name it value one. And this is going to be used for the username. 
and the data type is going to be a text. So we will be able to pass a username to filter or records. So instead of first name, I'm going to try this with username. And instead of having here a instead of having the text of the username that I want to find, I'm going to use the parameter so that I can enter anything that I want. So this is our value one parameter. I'm going to run it again. Save and run. Uh, just a side note, you might get many warnings like this one on many of your rules. Right now, don't worry too much about them. They are just warnings that maybe something could be better in your rule, but it's not always something that you want to change. So right now, let's just continue. So now that we save this, we are going to run. And let's see what results we get back. Okay, so we get both results, right? And you can see here that we are getting two results and it is saying that we are getting any username. So the filter is not being applied because we are not providing any information. So if we click here, we can actually change what the parameter of value one is going to be. So I'm going to say that I want to retrieve the username that is Danny Learns Pega. So here we have it. Uh, so maybe something that we don't want to do is to retrieve all of the records if we don't provide any parameter. So if I say that is equal to empty, it will retrieve all of the records. And maybe that kind of behavior is not something that we want to do. So if we don't want to retrieve anything, if the parameter value one is empty, we can check this condition, use null if empty, and that will not retrieve anything if that value is null. Okay, so let's make the change in our report definition rule. So let's open that filter and let's select that checkbox. So let's click submit and let's save this. So I also want to filter by password. So let's add the password. And we are going to need another parameter. So let's go to parameters. Let's add a second parameter. I'm going to name it value two. And this is going to be for the password. It's also going to be a text. And let's go back here. Let's use param.value2. And once again, here in options, I'm going to use null if empty. Let's save this. And let's test this again. Okay, we don't have any results. Let's add a username. Apply changes. We still don't have any results. Now, now let's try the password. If I remember correctly, our password was this. Apply changes. And now we get our account back. We get our account that has the username M Scott and the password number one bus. Okay, so that's great. Now we want a data page that will use this report definition. So let's go to our App Explorer and let's create a new data page. Actually, I'm going to make a copy of this account list data page. So let's open this rule. Let's click save as. This will make a copy with all of the configuration from that rule. 
I'm going to name this as account by username and password. Okay, so this is the rule. The only thing that I'm going to change for now is our report definition that we are using. So our report definition is retrieve account by username and password. And we can pass some parameters. We must pass some parameters in order to use that rule as we intend to. So if we click in parameters, you will see that we will have the value one and value two parameters that we created for this rule. So once again, here we can pass the, the names that we want to, the values that we want to use, but that's not something that is really dynamic. So instead, I'm going to create some parameters also in this rule. So for example, I'm going to once again say, value one and value two. And once again, this is going to be for the username and this one is going to be for the password. The data type is string, which is the same as text. And let's go back, let's go to parameters and let's use param.value one and param dot value two. So remember, okay, so this is important. These two parameters are the ones that the report definition is expecting. And these two other parameters are the ones that we are sending. These two parameters are going to be filled in our case type. So that's Value one is going to be username and value two is going to be password. So I'm going to click submit and I'm going to save this and run it. So let's try this again. So value one, we said that is for our username. And the password is password123 and the pound sign. So let's click run. And here we have result count is equal to one. And let's see in PX results what we get back. So yeah, that's exactly what we needed back. This is our username that we created with Daniel Spega as a username. And the password is password123. If we write a wrong password, we will get nothing back. So see, PX result count is equal to zero and we don't have any PX results. So now with this data page, we will be able to filter by username and password in our login section. So in the next video, I'm going to be talking about how to use this data page in our case type so that we can check if the username and the password match something in our database. And this will be useful in order to log in. So see you in the next video. Thanks.